This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Baruch Shechiyanu, Vikiyamanu, Vigiyanu, Lazman Azeh, Tudashin once again, the Torah from Parashas Barashas. And as I do from year to year, I like to try to unlock new secrets in the first word in the Torah, in the word Bereshis. And I don't think that I will uh, disappoint you this year. I'm going to start off with something that the Rebbe Rab Alexander told his grandson who became Bar Mitzvah on Shabbos Bereshis. So he said to his Anakil, my dear Anakil, now that you enter into the oil mitzvahs, you should know that Bereshis is Begematria Tayag. 6.13. So the grandson looked at the word and he said, Zayda, there's a shin. There's a shin extra. Bereshis is 9.13. Right? The base Reish, Aleph, Yud, and Tov He's talking 613, but there's a shin there, Zayda, it's 913. So he says, that's the idea. If you knock out the shin, the shin is bigamatri a yetzer. Yetzer is 300. If you knock out the yetzer, then you have the tayyad. That's what the Rebbe Alexander said. Which is fascinating because it, it, it therefore has a message in the first word of the Torah a Jew's mission in life to battle with the Yetzir. Like it says, which was a perfect Bar Mitzvah lesson because it says that a Bar Mitzvah boy is given the Yetzir Toiv and the, then the battle starts. So the battle royal, which is the purpose of life and that is that in whatever way we combat our Yetzir, whether it's in not being distracted during davening, not being bitl mavatul taira, not saying the wrong thing, not listening to the wrong thing. So Bereshis is bigamati yag. If you take out the shin, shin is bigamati yater. If you knock out the evil one, then you could fulfill tayag. Now, this thought from the Rebbe Rebbe Alexander made me realize something else: that Bereshis is actually bigamati a rock tayag. Rock is three hundred. Right, so Bereshis is Rak Tayag, only 613. Because that's what Bereshis is. Bishmil Torah and Bereshis. This world, what is this world about? Rak Tayag. Only 613. That's what it's about. We have 613 things to do in this world. Hayoyim This world is Rak Tayag. That's what, that's what Bereshis is. Bishmil Torah and Bereshis. This world is Rak Tayak. Now, this leads me, this battle with the Yetzer, leads me to discuss with you something mentioned later on in the Pasha. It says in the Pasha that Hashem tells Kai in the Pesach Chattis Reveks that at the door, sin crouches. Now this means that at the entrance of the womb, sin is waiting. So the Alta von Sabatka said, that the Gemara tells us that we learn from here that in the womb, there's no Yetzar. Because if there would be a Yetzar, then the child would be bayit, would kick to get out. Esav was an exception. Esav was already completed, also, but a child, a baby in its mother's womb doesn't have a Yetzirah. That's what it means. The Pesach had this ravens. Sin is waiting outside by the doorway. But in the womb, there's no Yetzirah because if there would be a Yetzirah, then the baby would kick out and become a miscarriage. So the altar from Sabatka Asks an interesting question. The author of Sabatka says, wait a second. Why, what purpose would there be to leave the womb? The womb is wonderful. 
everything is being taken care of. Everything. Person has, everything is being taken care of. Person has food, shelter, it's a cocoon of the womb, it's so comfortable. A malach is teaching the person Tyra, why would a person want to leave? Says the altar from Sabotka, the Yetzer can make out of Oilam Abba a Jelsa. That's the power of the Yetzer. The power of the Yetzer could make, you know, when we say, Chadesh Yemenu Kikedem, renew our days like the days of old. Many learn that the days of old mean in the womb, when everything was wonderful. But if the Yetzer would be there, then the child would want to leave. Why? Because it's the Yetzirah's job that the grass is greener always on the other side. Something else is better. That's why people aren't happy in their marriages. Because someone else is better. Grass is always greener on the other side. That's the Yetzirah. You have to be very careful from that. Now... Last year, I started a very ferocious campaign to get people to be Mavised, to review the weekly portion. And indeed, many people, to my great happiness, told me that this year is the first year they finished to be Mavised. And last year, I asked that by the Eila Shmais, it says that Ve'ila Shmoit stands for V'chayim Odom L'haver Apar Sheshnayim Mikra V'echatag So I asked why isn't there a remez in the beginning of the Torah? And Ve'ila Shmoit said already you missed the whole Chumash so put it in the beginning so this year I sat down and I said I want to see if there's a remez in Bereshis so I came up with the following Bereshis stands for Bez Oraisa Rashi Targ. It's right there. Bereshis is Bez Oraisa, two times the Tyra, and then it has the letters Rashi and Tophis Targ. That's right. And then Bora is Bo or Boin Arichas Rabba. If you do that, there's Arichas Rabba. So Bereshis is. Beis Oraisa Rashi Targum Boen Arichas Rabbi. You got a big Arichas. Now, whether that's an accurate remez or not, the fact of the matter is, is that one should, we have already a little bit behind because we only were able to start after they laid Bereshis on Tuesday. But one should not let the opportunity slip. Uh, something that gives a person arichas yomim v'shanim. And we've explained many times that arichas yomim means, number one, that a person will have enough time in the day to do what they want to do. And the brach of arichas yomim also means that a person should want the day to be long, should enjoy life so much that it's not looking, there are people that want to kill time, they can't wait the day to be over. When they get up in the morning, they're already can't wait to go to sleep. Rikas uh, Yaman means a person should enjoy life so much that he wants a long life. That's Rikas Yaman. And that comes, that bracha comes, and also longevity comes from being Mavis Sedra. Now, if a person was Mavis Sedra last year with uh, Chumash and Targum, one should try to add Rashi. And if you can't do all the Rashis, at least do some of the Rashis. And then the next year you'll do more of the Rashis. But do, look to be Moshe. The Rebbe Rav Moshe Leib Sasev, the Sasever, says, a Poshet Tezach. The first Pasek, Bereshis Barolik Kim Es Hashem Ayim Es Haaretz teaches us, Bereshis, the very first building block of life is that Barolik Kim Es Hashem Ayim Es Haaretz. That's the first foundation of life. That's what Ramesh Leib says. Bereshis, the number one, that's what we say, Reishis, Kochmo, Yiras Hashem. Yiras Hashem means awareness of God. That's what it means. The Rambam starts off his monumental Yad What does he put in in the beginning of the Yad HaChazaka? 
Yesayda Yesaydas, the foundation of all foundations, and the base of all wisdom, Leda Shayesha Matsui Rishan, there is a creator, and he brought about everything else. So therefore, it says, Ramoshalev Masasav, Bereshis, the very first thing, Baralikim Esa Shemayim Esaretz. We have to know that Hashem created Shemayim Vav. Now, on that, on that Yusoid, the Yagdul Torah adds the following. Now, actually, it was the Rebbe Melexander. The Rebbe Melexander adds a knech. He says, if a person realizes that Borel Likim Esa Shemayim Esaretz, then then by him everything Gashmi is is Sayyavavayu is not important is heaven if a person realizes that Hashem created Shemayim Varetz is a different mensch such a mensch and I'll tell you a geval de gevard from the Hele Gredamsk uh, later on in the parsha. Later on in the parsha, it says, "By he Hevel Royet sign. Hevel was a shepherd. The Kayan Oya Oyved Adam. Again, listen to the words of the pasuk. By he Hevel Royet sign. Hevel was a shepherd. The Kayan Oya Royet Adam says the Heiliger Adams. The Tzadik Levracha Tzchusi Yogan Aleinu." We have a cloud. Kol mokum shenema vayehi lashin sar. Distress. Vahaya lashin simcha. So now let's look at this pasuk. Vayehi tzar. Haya is simcha. So now let's listen to the pasuk. Vayehi havel rayei tzayin. That's sar. V'kayin haya rayei adama. That's simcha. Why? Because for Hevel, that he had to work and he had to be involved in Gashmias, that was a tzar. For Kayin, that was his whole life, that was his simcha. What an outlook. A person that is a spiritual person, his joy is when he could finally open up the Gemara, when he could finally do mitzvahs. A person that's a shtick gashmi, he's fighting and clawing to get back. He can't wait till Yom Tov and are over to get back to the workplace. If a person voracious, if his building block is borrowed, he came as a shemaim then Baharit says the Sayyub The world is Sayyub Avayyad. Ika is not this world. That's why Vayahi Havel Rayat Sayyid. Havel Vayahi ain't no Elosh and Tsar. When he had to go and work with the Tsar, that was Tsar. But Vikayan Hoya, that's Elosh and Simcha. For him, Rayat Dhamma, that was his life. His life was working and selling and making the money. Every year I tell you, to diak by me, that the third possible in the Torah doesn't have Rashi. Now I know if I write a commentary on the Torah, I'll make sure to have something on the first 50 psukim. Something! Rashi has nothing to say in the third possible in the Torah. See, you'll say, well, Rabbi Weiss, it is a short pasuk. There's a big cash on that pasuk. It says, by everywhere else it says, by he chay. Why over here does it say, by he are? It should say, by he chay. Chizkuni asks the cash. The Chizkuni says, it doesn't say it, by he chay, because since both are one word, it might as well say what it is. If it's a Gansa story, so the Torah always is like, knock at Lashen Kitsara, the Torah always chooses brevity. So that's why it says, but here, 
Vayar is one word, Vayechein is one word. So therefore, it doesn't have to sacrifice anything. So it says, Vayar. It's not such a posh of the Torah. It's because Vayechein is one letter shorter than Vayar. And the Torah always uses brevity. So I'll tell you another answer. But why did Rashi discuss it? The third, the third Pasuk? I mean, so I wanted to say that this is humility of Rashi. Rashi was a very humble person. The humility of Rashi that he wanted to show that he didn't have a chazaka on the Torah. So the third, you know, if you have three psukha, you have a chazaka. You know, I, I don't have a chazaka on the Torah. So deliberately he left out the third pasuk. The Svas Emes says Amayu de Keteritz. He says, you know why it doesn't say Vayichei? Because it didn't remain with the R. Hashem created the R Agonas, the R of the six days of creation, but he saw that it was too good for the Rishayim, so he hid it. So it's not true Vayichei. They have a Kimi Hiyar Vayichei, but it wasn't Vayichei, it didn't remain. Hashem took it and he hid it. The shir that I gave on Hoshana Rabbi Knight, I mentioned that the Vilna Gain says, he says, a big cash. If Hashem hid the R, why is he telling it to us? But it's a tease. If it's not here, what Hashem is saying, okay, I want you to have something to look forward to. The answer is he hid it where we could get it. Because the, it's brought down, Balaturim says, Esa or is bigamatria bat Torah. Hashem put the or in the Torah, that's the or Torah. So he hid it for Tzadikim, the Tzadikim can get it even in this world. That's why it says, Chachmas Adam Torah Pana. Kiner Mitzvah Torah or, that's the or Torah. But for us plain folk that are not that, are not that, that are not on that level, there's another reason why the, it's mentioned the Aragonas. It mentions the Aragonas because the Vilna Gain says that there's a way to merit the Aragonas. The hidden light. Now, you have to understand the reward of the hidden light. If I would tell you that if you do a certain mitzvah, then you'll get an oil field. Now, an oil field is a big thing. You have an oil field, you could keep your children and, and son-in-laws in Kailu for the next ten generations. If I would tell you that if you do a mitzvah, you could have a home in the Riviera for relaxation. All of that is allowed to the Rishon. The Risham have oil fields. They have yachts. They have vacations in Acapulco. They have everything. But the Oragonas is too good for them. They could have galamar. They could have caviar. They could snorkel. But not the Oragonas. The Oragonas is, is just, it's out of their league. It's too good. The guy says, let me tell you how you could get the Aragonas. So if, if I ask you to guess, you would probably say, oh, a person that gets up early in the morning to learn Torah, that's my son Nefesh, to be conveyed to Matara. You would tell me somebody, maybe, who brings light in people's lives, gives a doctor who gives people hope. Your Agonas, light, the inner light. The guy says, we zoich to the Aragonas not for doing anything. Just by not doing something. It's a remarkable guy. The guy says, at a moment where we could speak Lash and Hara, and we hold back and we don't, we zoich to the Aragonas. It's a remarkable thing. Remarkable thing. Think about what the world would have been if the Nochesh didn't speak to Chava. Be a different world. 
complete different world. What would be if Yosef didn't speak with Yaakov? Be a different world. What would be if the Maraglim didn't speak to Kal Yisrael? Be a different world. The Oragonis is for what we decided not to say. Now, I know there are people that invest. They have their favorite investment. There are some people that buy silver. They buy silver, keep on buying silver. I know people that buy Coca-Cola stock. They just keep on buying Coca-Cola. There are people that invest in gold. Keep on putting money in gold. A person has an Orahagonis portfolio. And I recommend this to everyone. I have a little notebook. A little buy a very nice. Go to a good fancy stationery store and buy yourself a notebook with a lock on it, like a diary. And that should be your Orahagonis portfolio. And the next time, because this is how it happens. Uh, people over here are B'nai Aliyah. Stama's like to go around gossiping. We don't go and gossip. This is how it happens. Somebody does something really not nice to you. So you're hurt, and the first thing you do, you pick up your call, you want to call your friend and say, you'll never believe it, he did it to me again. How long can I put it up with this? But you're not supposed to do it unless this some benefit. I know it's true, and I know the other person was wrong. And the other person is not a nice person. But none of that is a heter to share it with someone else. We feel better when we share it with someone else. But it's not a heter to tell someone else. It's very hard not to do it because it's a coping me- mechanism. You want to come home and tell your wife, tell your husband, you won't believe what this person did. You just won't believe it. Wait till I tell you. I gotta get her off my chest. Now, when you do that and you come home and you tell the person, their opinion of that person is altered forever. So instead of doing that, you come home, you open up your Oragonas portfolio, and you write. On Yom or Yom Vav Shel Shabbos Parshas Bereishis, I didn't tell this to anybody. That's an Oragonis portfolio. That's why we learn about the Oragonis. Vayikach Hashem lekim es Adam, vayanichenu began Eden lo Avda uleshamra. Hashem took man, put him in Gan Eden, to work it and to guard it. So Rashi says an interesting thing. Rashi says, Hashem took him with enticing words and seduced him to enter Gan Eden. Now let me ask you something. I tell you, you want a weekend in Lakewood? A new Marriott opened up, five star hotel. You want a, a weekend in the presidential suite? Well, let me, let me convince you. Let me convince you. You're running. Presidential suite, Lakewood. I have to convince you? What's this that Hashem had to convince Adam to go into paradise? Piteyu Likonis. What's that all about? That's kind of Rashi. Very difficult Rashi. What are you convincing? 
I tell you, listen, on Reb Chaim Kanievsky's block, there's a fancy Hilton. I'm going to put you and your wife up there and you'll be able to dine with Reb Chaim. I, I'm only giving you, I'm sorry, I'm only giving you the presidential suite and five-star gourmet meals. Come, let me convince you to go. I convince you? I mean, I, 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 I'd have to stop you with, with, with walls of steel. What's chat? So the Lavush says that because Hashem told him Lo'avdo L'shamra, the Ibn Ezra and the Rodak say Lo'avdo means to weed the plants and to water them and L'shamra is that the animals shouldn't dirty the throat. It's a big job to take care of Ganein. It was going to be the groundskeeper of Ganein. That's why he had to seduce him to take the job. The Lavush learns a practical way. But the Gera Rebbe, I think the Gera Rebbe, says another pshat. The Gera Rebbe says that Adam Arishan had a premonition that he wasn't going to stay in Gan Eden long. He wasn't going to remain there long. And therefore to go in and then get kicked out is not a gishmaka thing. It's like Ramesha initially, he didn't want to have an air conditioner. He says he doesn't need it. But if he gets used to it and then there's a power failure, it's going to share his learning. So until Dr. Allender insisted that he have air conditioning, he did without air conditioning. God loved her, did without air conditioning. So the Gary Rebbe said, Adam felt that he had premonition that he wasn't going to get it, he wasn't going to stay there long. He didn't really want to go in. He says, I don't want to get used to paradise and then I'm going to lose it. So the Rabbi Nishalaylam seduced him. What did he seduce him with? So here the Ger Rebbe quotes the Zayd of the Svas Emes. And he says, the Svas Emes says, there's a Gemara in Tanis Taf Chofei, Gemirei de Meshemaya Meyev Yehivei Mishkoloi Shokle. Shemaim they give, they don't take back. Shemaim's not an Indian giver. So if the Rabbi Nishalom gave Adam Ganeid and he's not taking it back. So when he kicked him out of Gan Eden, he left him Shabbos, which is Me'ein Oilam Haba. That's what the Swas Emma says. Adam was convinced to go into Gan Eden because even if you get kicked out, you're going to take Gan Eden with you. People that know, know how to use Shabbos. Ah, it's Me'ein Oilam Haba. That's what he took out. That was the Piteyu Bidvarim. That was the enticement. That was the seduction. Tells us what Shabbos is. If you remember, we talked about the Kayak of hearing in the shir I gave on Sukkis. I gave a lot of extra shiurim this season. And I told you that somebody once listened to one of these shiurim on, I, I believe, TorahAnytime.com. And I had asked last year that the sukkah, that the lulav is diamond to the spine and the esrik to the heart and the hadas to the eyes and the rava to the mouth. And the medrash says, those are the ikir, evarim. So I asked, what about the ears? After all, on the parsha of the Eved Ibri, where it says we pierce him in the ear, the Medrash says, Aver cotton yesh ba'adam. There's a small aver in a person, and it could change around his whole life, her whole life. And that's the ear. An ear is a remarkable thing. You tell a person one thing, and if it, if it meets its mark, it changes the whole person. It's like I told you, my uncle told me when I am eight, you're going to dive in anyway three times a day. You might as well make it worth it. You're doing it anyway. That stuck by me now for 50 years. Aver cotton yesh So we have a small aver. Why, why isn't there something in the little of an essig for the ears? It's so, it's so important. So somebody told me. I don't even know his name, although I was quoting him. He, he met me on the street. He says, well, maybe it's because 
on Rosh Hashanah, when we had the mitzvah of Lishmoya Kol Shaifa, we were already Mesak in the hearing. That's why we don't need it. We already took care of the hearing. Great answer. So then I asked, what about the brain? We have the spine, we have the heart, we have the mouth, we have the eyes, now we have the ears, what about the moyach? And the answer is, is that the moyach is the mitzvah of sukkah. Because sukkah is the mind. We're not eating matzah, we're not. In the sukkah, the only thing special, we're eating the kreplach, what are we doing? Setting up the sukkah was only action mitzvah, what are we doing? We're thinking about the anani akav. So sukkah is the moyach. So since the ear is so important, Aver cut and Yesh Ba'adam, why in the morning when we get up don't we make a bracha that we could hear? Just like we make a bracha that we could see, we should make a bracha that we could hear. That we should say, in the, in the, in the night we were deaf. And now we can hear? Why don't we have a bracha like that? So, I, 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 you'll excuse me, I don't know how to pronounce it. The Rebbe from Butchitush. Huh? Butchitush. Butchitush, okay. The Rebbe from Butchitush. He says an interesting thing. He says, because the sin of man came, because Ula Adam Amar Kishamata Lekalishtecha. Since the sin came through Shmia, that's why we don't make a brach in the morning on hearing. That's what he says. The Maisi is, I had a kasha. The original sin started because the eights was Nechmad Lamara. That's also the eyes. That's what he says. This is an answer that's quoted all over the place. I thought of a different reason, a difference between the eyes and the ears. There are many people that learn in the middle of their sleep. They put on tape recorders. And they play things in the middle of sleep. They, they market this. So vice to Christ, there is hearing in the middle of the sleep. But there's no seeing in the middle of the sleep. Can't see. So that's why we have a bracha pekeh ivrim. We don't have a bracha pekeh kersh. It's a possibility. But I give you the main, the main answer from the Rebbe. And now... We're going to talk about an interesting fact of the creation which is not well known. And that is, according to many, Chava was Adam Arishan's second wife, not his first wife. (coughs) The Chida in the play David. Quoting Medrash Bechidush, Sefer Ben Sira, the Zoyar, and the Yalkut Ruveni all say basically the same thing. It says in the Apostle, This time, To this one, Yikarish. Now, most of us learn that it says that Adam Arishan tried to mate with all the other animals. And there was no nachas. But he says, Zoy zapam. That's the way most of us learn. But the Chidah in the Pnei David says that originally the Rabbi Nishalayim created Adam a wife, Mino Adama, just like him. And they were equal. And the woman would not be off to the husband. They fought all the time. They fought all the time. And this woman's name was Lilius. Lilius. 
finally she couldn't take it. She said the shame, I'm a Irish, and she flew up to Shemayim. She couldn't take it. So then the Rabbi Nishalom created from one of Adam's ribs, and this time now she was cough of Adam because she was created from part of him. So therefore, as Adam says, Adam This is my wife. And that's Pshat. What it says in Mishlei. Toivim ashnayim. Good are two. Mino echad. When they come from one. Toivim ashnayim. Mino echad. When they come from one. Asha yesh lem schar toivamo. And that's Pshat. Motza isha motza toiv. If it's Isha, Isha is Bigamatria 306. Isha is 311. If the Isha knows that she's a little smaller than her husband, she's cough of him, she's an Isha Kashera, then what's the Isha Matzah type? But Motze Ani has Ha Isha. Ha Isha is 311. It's the same. That's my mamas. The miller used to say that there can't be two captains in one boat. There's a captain and a first mate. If there's two, there can't be two kings? And that's what was told. The moon. Can't have two kings on one throne. Rabbi Nishon created. Now, what's Lilius? That's Lilius. Lilius is a woman that says always, Lee, Lee, mine, mine. Only interested in herself. Or Lilius is Leslie. She's always saying, I don't have, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have this, I don't have that. That's Lilius. That's a destruction. There are a lot of people when they're dating, boys, they're looking for a woman that has alamilus. He marries a woman that's so overqualified, so much more than him, that she's not tough of to him. Looking for a woman with a lot of money. He comes from a simple home. She comes from a very wealthy home, and she's looking down at him from the first time that she meets him. That's no good. That's no good. See what happened with the first creation. A woman has to be able to be cough of the husband, otherwise it doesn't work. Is <coughs> a, a remarkable vart from Rav Chaim Shmulevitz. It's remarkable, but it's a very high level. This rabbi can't say that he's holding on this level, but it's, we could all learn from it. Says, Hashem made man a helper. Ask Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, what did man need a helper for? It says in the Medrash that the Malachi Achores roasted meat and metzan and yayin and cooled chilled wine for Adam Arishan and Ganeden. So Adam Arishan and Ganeden had plenty of helpers. Reb Chaim Shalevin says, what do you need helpers for? What do you need helpers? Reb Chaim Shmulevitz says, you don't understand. The Yezer is for you to help her. Because it says like, it's not to be good, good to be alone, because if you're alone, then you're wrapped up with me, myself, and I. I am chesed, Yibane. The root of Ava is have is to give. The Malachim, he didn't have to take care of. You get married. You have somebody to take care of. That makes the Adam Sholeng. He says, that's the purpose of the Isaac and Egde. Not a very American way of looking at it. The American way is always what's in it for me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
ותיתן גם לאיש האימא ויוכל. And she gave to the, her husband, and he ate. Thousands of Svarim try to figure out how could it be Adam Arish and Yitzir Kapa of Shalakarish Baruch Hu should eat something without an OU. I mean, Adam Arish, he wasn't given. Today we have thousands of ingredients that are not kosher. He was given one thing that's not kosher. He was put in paradise and he was only asked to do one thing. And as soon as his wife gave it to him, he ate it. Thousands of Svarim talk about what could possibly have been the reason. For today, I want to discuss one idea. One of the Gurei Ha'arizal one of the cubs of the Ari was the Shach written about 500 years ago the Shach writes that Adam Arishan whose body was on the Oretz and his Rosh reached the Shemayim before he sinned was very worried that people would mistake him as a god And he figured that if he sins, then he'll be demoted, as he was. And he wouldn't have to worry about that people would think that he's a god. That's what the Shach said. It's not much like the Mekoshis hates him that we say to him, But says the Shach, we learn over here, don't make from a Cheshbonus. Don't be smarter than God. Hashem tells you to do something. Don't, be, don't make from a cheshbainus. And by the way, this happens all the time. This happens all the time. People allow Lash and Hara when they talk about other people who talk in Shul. Yeah, but I got it. Takona. People are Malbim play Chavayr Barabim. It's amazing what people do. They think. They think they have a license. That's, that's what the Yetzar does. The Yetzar, with Bnei Aliyah, the Yetzar can't come to you straight. It's amazing the excuses that children have for not being Mikhaim Kibbut Avain. It's amazing the excuses that people have for smoking. You have to understand that if I don't smoke, I can't learn as good. Amazing thing. Amazing thing. Smoking kills people. Yeah, but if I don't smoke, the HR gets people to smoke. I remember I was a young boy. I came home once once a month to you from Yeshiva. So my father died in the Swedish Shishul, Rabbi Sachs. Zalzan Gesund has had a shear in the Tzire. So I went to Rav Moshe and I said, is it alright if I daven with Rav Sachs? It's a Yeshiva Sheminian. The Sada Shishul is a Baal the Sheminian. Rav Moshe looked at me incredulously. You only go home once a month. Your father only gets nachas once a month. And you're thinking not to daven with your father? But you see what the Yadiyetah works? You have a mitzvah the right to keep it away. Yeah, but you can dive in the yeshiva shaman. The Yitzhara starts backing away. That's the Yitzhara. Now here we have a myridic of art from the Chidushi Arim. Myridic. See how he takes a posik and explains it. Vayoymer Hashem el kayin lomo korolach. Shem said to Kayan, Loma Karala, why are you upset? Loma Nafla Panecha, why did your face fall? Why are you looking so downcast? So the Chidush Arim says, What's Hashem's cash? If Hashem didn't accept your carbon, if you got a fail mark, 
You made an effort to bring a carbon Hashem, and Hashem spurned it. Wouldn't you be downcast? What's Rabbi Nishon's cash? I mean, look how your client's reaction. Client's reaction. Client's reaction is very understandable. <laughs> Hevel got the good housekeeping seal of approval from the Abishta. Kayin got thumbs down. So wouldn't you be down, downcast? What's the cash? Kiddush uh, Yavim. Mamish. This is an answer worthy of the Muslim movement. Kiddush Yavim doesn't need my askama. Kiddush Yavim says, Hashem asked Kayin, tell me why you're really disappointed. You're really disappointed that I didn't like your carbon, or you're disappointed that I like devils. Tell me what's really bothering me. Oh, tell me what's really bothering you. Is it really bothering you that you got to fail, or is it bothering you that Hevel got to score? I want to know what's really bothering you. This is a rep- reminiscent. Of a famous observation of Reb Chaim Ebrisk, Zech Tzadik Levrachus was the Yagim Aleinu. Reb Chaim said that many times he had Balabatim come to him with Shverish Shilas. They were brewing beer and something mixed in, and the Shila was, is it bottle? And he says, it's not bottle, and all the beer is, is no good. You have to throw it out. They lose Mamish. A whole season's business. And they accept it without any, without any problem. Look, uh, Ralph Baskin. But if they come with a din tire against someone else and the rub rules for the other person, that they can't accept. That's war. Why? Because then Yenem is getting it. Then somebody else is getting it. That we can't handle. Listen, it's not kosher. It's not kosher. Okay, what can you do? But somebody else is getting it. Ooh, that we can't handle. Very big problem. A lot of time in marriages, a spouse can't handle the other spouses succeeding when they're not. Very painful. You know, you always have to ask yourself, somebody has a yard side, he doesn't get the omit. Is it really bothering him that he can't give the tat to the covet? Or is it bothering him that he's ruining his record? He had a good record. Or is it bothering him that the other person is considered more khashiv than him? Lama karalak. What's really bothering you? Lama nafla panecha. What's really getting to you? Something we always have to ask ourselves. We always have to check ourselves. Once told you, Amaisa, one of my brothers had a, uh, had a bris on Shabbos. And there was an Elta Zayda by the bris. And he had chest pains. And he didn't want to go in with Atzal. No matter what people said, no, no, he's not. So Rabruvain was there at the bris, and Rabruvain whispered a few words to him, and he was masking to go with Atzal. So later, after the bris, I went over to Rabruvain and he said, You know, Rebbe, I'm a Rav. I got to know what the Rebbe said. What was the secret? So he said, I told him as follows. I told him, here with all your descendants around you, you have a choice. You always kept Shabbos, even in the Shverus situation. But here they're going to know, is it because you're a stubborn old man? Or is it because you want to do the Ratzon Hashem? Right now the Ratzon Hashem is to Hayecha Kaidim. It's to be Mechal Shabbos. So here you could show them it's not that you're a stubborn old man. It's that you want to do the Ratzon Hashem. Immediately he went to the hospital. That's how we have to know. What's really behind your feelings?
ויהי למך שתיים ושמונים שנה, ומאה שנה, ויולד בן. Now that's a departure from all the others. It says, Vayoyled Yeret. Vayoyled Mr. Shelach. Here it says, Vayoyled Ben. And then it says, Vekorish Moinoyah. Why does it first say, Vayoyled Ben? So the Da'az of Kedem Bali Toysvis, the Paneach Rosa, says that this was an Eitzah from the Zayda. Mr. Shelach gave an Eitzah to the Tata that he shouldn't call him a name right away because the Mechashvim might curse Noyach. But if they don't give him a name, then they won't be able to curse. So that's why it says, Vayolid Ben. But the Rabbeinu Bachya and another Pshat in the Kenobali Tyson says that one of Noyach's names was Ben. It's interesting, you know, there's a lot of Jews that are called Ben. Not just Ben Franklin. Ben is not just sh- short for Benjamin. The name Ben. And it was called Ben, says the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, because from him, Ben Ha'olam. From him, the world was built. Very interesting chat. So now I'm going to share with you an amazing thought. Says a Yakum Kayan El Hebel Ochiv by Yahargeyu. Kayan got up against Hebel, his brother, and killed him. Why? So we know that he didn't want to split the Yerusha of the world with with Hebel. Same Mice with Asaph. When Asaph came out, it says he came out bloody. Why? Why did Rivka, who was at that time 23 years old, why didn't she ever have any more children? Even on today's standards, that's very young. It says that when Esau came out, he decided he didn't want to share the Yerusha of the world with any more siblings. So he smashed Rivka's womb, and she couldn't have children anymore. That's why Rivka is the same letters as Kirba. Because of what happened in her, she knew the true, the true uh, nature of Asaph. That's why he was called, uh, called Edain. Came out with the blood of his mother. You see, the, the complete opposite of Yaakov. Asaph didn't care about his mother, bloodied his mother, kicked his mother. And Yaakov, it says that Eichezus Bakev Asaph, he held on the heel, says the Torah, so that his mother shouldn't have to have two labor and deliveries. So Esau kicked his mother, bloodied his mother, wounded his mother. And Yaakov didn't want his mother to have two, two labors. That's the difference between Yaakov and Esau. And then he tried to hit Yaakov into Fontanelle and, and take away all competition. Just as she made a miracle, puny Yaakov was able to keep it from smashing in his head. So here too, Cain killed Evel. He didn't want to share the Yerusha soil. Kill the May Ochicha Tzayikim Alayim in Adama. The May blood. Not just because Cain didn't know anatomy and therefore he didn't know where vital organs were and he kept on stabbing him until he finally hit a vital organ. But also we know the May that Hashem told Cain the bloods of all your brother's ancestors at Saif Kaladiris are screaming out. Because you took away all his ans- all his descendants. You have all your nine ancestors, descendants, all the descendants. At Saif Kaladiris. So Ramban says an amazing thing. You know, you ask people who are the, who was the oldest person in the history of mankind. So people who are not really in the know might say Mr. Shelech. Others that are well versed will tell you Serach Basosher, Achya Ashiloini, Chiroim Ha'aduloini. All these people lived way over a thousand years. 
But the Ramban says that Cain died in the Mabal. The Ramban. That means that Cain lived 1,650 years. Oh, an interesting, interesting tidbit. Cain, the killer, lived 1,650 years. You know why he lived that long, says the Ramban? That he should see every one of his set descendants wiped out in the flood. He wiped out every one of Hevel's descendants. So he should live to see every one of his descendants destroyed. The magnificent Mita Kenegan Mita. Tragic Mita Kenegan Mita. He wanted to be Yorish the whole world. He would live to see that he was Yorish nothing. Hevel would become the Gilgal of Moshe Rabbi. The Emre Bina asks an interesting question. He says, why do we have to know? Why do we have to know about the why, why do we have to know about all the Dairis till Avram Avinu? Why do we have to know they lived so long? 900 years. I don't know, 60 years. Why do we have to know this? The Imre Bina says that there's a belief in a person that when he gets older, he's going to be better. Yeah, yeah, I'm young now. I'm in the heat of youth. I get older, things will be better. You see from the parasha, when you get older, you don't get better. They got older and older and older until they were so wicked that they were destroyed. On one's own, you get older, you don't get better. You get older, you become mushrish b'chait. person can't rely, yeah, when I get older, it's going to be better. The yetzer is going to slow down, it'll be better. It's not the way it works. A person has to work on themselves. Before we conclude, I want to share one more thought with you. But before I do, I want to remind you that we back next week to our normal schedule, share Tuesday night. Tonight we got a very late start. The daf was hard, and I finished very late in Staten Island. Normally we start 10 to 10. We ask you to please tell people about this year. If you could put up a sign in your shul, if you could call people, tell people that people should start to also benefit from this year. If you're listening on one of the medias, uh, a lot of effort is put in the shurim. We're asking for sponsors. 360 is a postal sponsor. It pays for the week's postage. 300 is to sponsor the share, and it's, it's heard all over the place. I send out tapes, CDs, Kalalash and Tor, anytime.com. The way to sponsor a share, you can email me, rmmwsi at aol.com. Call me at 718 916 3100. Or if somebody here wants to sponsor next week's, you could tell me as well. Another way to support this share is to subscribe. And the fact that you come to this year doesn't mean I send out, I have archived from 32 years of shiurim. So I send out from other years. So if you're interested to subscribe, it's $312. You get a CD or a tape every week throughout the year, mailed first class. Again, 718-916-3100, rmmwsi at aol.com. It says, Vayinochem Hashem ki osa esa odem ba'aretz vayitzatzev el libay. So Poshim Shat in the Poshim is, is that Hashem regretted that he made man and it saddened him. 
But we know that the Shechina and Atzvus are mutually exclusive. Right? We know, as a matter of fact, that a person who is Ba'atzvus can't have Shechina. That's why the Elisha, they have to bring a Managin, a minstrel, in order that there should be the Ruach Hashem. Only when Yaakov heard that Yosef is chai, but chi ruach Yaakov aviyem. Only then did he have the ruach Hashem. So the Imre Emes says that Hashem wanted to destroy the Dora Mabu, but they were besimcha. Because the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Dav Kufkes, tells them, tells us that chayeyem kalim ma'oy. They had very easy life. Everything was wonderful. They didn't have headaches. They had a perfect climate. It was like uh, Aruba. Perfect climate. The, the fruit grew without any effort. There was no change of seasons. And they were besimcha. And when people are besimcha, then the Midas Adin is not shaylat. It's an amazing fact. Simcha keeps away the Midas Adin. And therefore, says the Chidush uh, Imre Emes, that Hashem planted in them Atzvus, depression. And only then could the Midas Adin be shed. That's why a Yid must be very careful not to be Ba'atzvus. I told you that the Chassam Seifer says, the Welt says that Rabbi Yudha Nasi started Brachas with Kriyash Mashal Arvis because that's the first mitzvah that devolves upon a Bar Mitzvah Bach. Chassam Seifer said it's a mistake. The first mitzvah is Simcha. Ivdu es Hashem is I told you that the Bahag says that it's a mitzvah the Raisa, the Samach, the Bechol Atayv, Hashem Nasan Lecha Hashem Alikechel of Eisecha, is one of the tired mitzvahs. And when a person is besimcha, then it wards off din. So a person has to watch. It's one of the eitzes of the eitzer to put the person ba'atzvah. A person that's ba'atzvah. If a person is depressed, then he doesn't treat his spouse. She doesn't treat their spouse right. A person doesn't do mitzvahs correctly. It has to be ivdu as Hashem besimcha. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.